Welcome to Vegan: The Way of Compassion. Interview with the Reverend Father Chris Golding, Vegan, Part One of Two. I'm uh, profoundly、um, in awe of、um, those who choose a path of peace, of compassion, of empathy. It's a challenging call in our world, where we see so much violence, we see、uh, so much hatred, both、uh, personally and more globally. But I just want to encourage people that、um, there is hope, there is there is light, there is compassion, there is joy to be found、um, in, in making、uh, these choices to to be considered. In the way that we live, that the way we engage in the world is going to make a real impact. This affectionate note is from Father Chris Golding, an Australian expat and Episcopal priest who is currently serving as school chaplain at Seabury Hall on beautiful Maui Island, Hawaii. Father Chris Golding is famous for his favorite title, the Vegan Priest. Even though the Reverend admits that he is not the only vegan priest in the world, he wants to express who he truly is, and ultimately affirms that a compassionate vegan lifestyle is the perfect path that God wants for us. Truth-seeking viewers. Let's begin our show today with Father Chris Golding explaining how the cycle of violence is a cruel and undeniable consequence of a non-vegan lifestyle. I think when we're caught in what I imagine as a cycle of violence, you know, there's an inherent violence、um, in you know factory farming, particularly of meat. Of、um, these large scale commercial、um, haulers, fish haulers, and harvesting fish, and the the resultant impact on other animal life, and more and more, I think we're learning now the environmental impact of growing all this、uh, grain and feeding it to animals,、um, and the inefficiency taking out. For a moment, just any compassionate response, the inefficiency of feed. In a global population like that, and that literature is widely available, as well as the impact on、uh, global warming and carbon emissions and so on、um, from animals. When I speak to the idea of being in a cycle of violence, you know, I've done a little bit of reading, and I'd certainly like to look into this more of the effects that. People working on the killing floor,、um, the effect that that has being engaged in those physical acts of violence toward animals,、um, what what it has on their own soul, their own psyche, the way it has a negative impact on their relationships, the higher rate of domestic violence、uh, and other forms of non-compassionate action, it's really concerning, and I think that. Particularly in places that we have the means to uh, uh, an abundant food supply,、um, that there can be a way where we can choose differently, not just for、uh, animals' sake, but for human beings' sake, to say no to violence. Father Golding now reminds us how the Bible says that the original diet of human beings was plant-based. He also expounds about the principles of nonviolence that were the core of Lord Jesus Christ's teachings right up until his ultimate sacrifice. I think the classic example is the Christian story of creation, which is in the Hebrew Scriptures and is common to the Jewish faith as well. They speak of the Garden of Eden,、uh, you know, a place of perfection、uh, where God created、um, all living things. And there's a line in that that says, you know, that God gave every green plant for food. 
you know, that there's a duty uh, of the human beings to name the animals, but no mention of eating them. And so the Seventh-day Adventists, part of the Christian faith, take this quite literally. And they do, you know, they're vegetarian. They did not eat meat. Certainly, uh, when it comes to nonviolence, you know, Jesus is the ultimate teacher in nonviolence. Uh, he goes to, uh, you know, a horrific violent death willingly and peaceably because he believes that this will be the ultimate sacrifice to show once and for all that the sacrificial systems in the temple, which rely on the offering and killing of animals as sort of a means to access God. Christians understand that that Jesus, that final sacrifice, that that killing of animals is no longer necessary. And so if Jesus is the final sacrifice, that is the violence to end all violence. You know, it's a full and perfect renunciation of violent acts. And some people have just taken that to be, well, we're no longer going to be violent to human beings. But I would see in the example of the the temple cult, that sacrificial killing of animals, Jesus putting an end to that also says to us, we need to move to a place where we're putting an, an end to all uh, mm -hmm. unnecessary killing of animals by human beings. Furthermore, Father Golding explains how the simplicity of the ethical planet-saving vegan diet can enhance spiritual practice. I take great encouragement from the, some of the orthodox traditions of our faith, the Eastern traditions, um, which uh, fast during Lent, as uh, many people do, and you may have heard of no meat um, on Fridays or so on. Um, but the Orthodox, some Orthodox traditions take a vegan diet throughout the Lenten season. And so they take the um, simplicity of that vegan lifestyle to be a way of um, you know, giving back to God, giving back to the earth, living simply. Um, and so when I think of myself as a vegan, I sort of joke about always being on a perpetual sort of orthodox fast when we think of the, the inherent cycles of violence in our food system again particularly the commercial food system which is so mechanized um to the point of of not even really understanding animals as living beings at all they're sort of just understood as a means to an end a product to to be packaged and, and sold. So the Greek models of fasting, you know, give us an insight, give us an opportunity maybe to see that these strands of paying attention to what we eat, they've always been in the Christian faith. And there's maybe a way of building them out and understanding them more um, in practical terms, in a more global perspective, certainly, but in a more practical sense on an individual level. The seeds of universal love and compassion are within everyone, whether they know it or not. As for Father Golding, he awakened these noble qualities at an early age. I grew up in a meat-eating family, and then in ninth grade, I had this friend of mine who invited me to a, a rally, a protest against caged chickens, you know, chickens who are raised in very unhealthy environments, uh, inhumane environments, can often not even move their own body around, you know, often living in their, their own waste and excrement. Um, and there was a cage there uh, that had a human being in it and sort of replicated the dimensions that a chicken would live in proportional to a chicken size and a human size. And that was really confronting to me. And uh, around the same time, I found a book in the library uh, at school uh, by Greenpeace on vegetarianism. 
and again it just really made sense to me as someone who loved animals and always had uh, pets as a child it just started this light bulb went on i realized you know there's something there's a disconnect here and so 10th grade uh at the beginning of the school year i said i'm going to be a vegetarian so I told my parents it told told everyone i said okay no i feel this is important to me and so that's what i did and uh i was vegetarian uh, all the way through from the age of 14 through the age 30 and on my 30th birthday just to sort of mark the occasion i transitioned to to a vegan Our immense appreciation to Father Chris Golding for sharing the Holy Bible's teachings on nonviolence and how we can implement love in action through our daily lives, as we gladly anticipate learning more in the second part of this interview. For more information, please visit veganpriest.org. Definitely, the future is vegan. There are many things that show it clearly. Nikola Donev, vegan. Loving viewers, thank you for your company today.